Since we can't meet for class today, I thought it might be helpful to show you a couple more examples of loops, and hopefully this will give you some hints and some guidance on the homework assignment this week. So I have right here a Hello World program just to get started with. All right, so if I hit Run, it's going to say Hello. And for my first example, I want to create a little game that lets you um, pick a random number between 1 and 10, and then try to get the user to guess that number. So I'm going to do this in a separate method. Let me go ahead and create public static void. I'll call this guess. And you have to tell it what number that you want the user to guess. Right? So for example, in my main method, I might call guess and say, let, let's say 7 is our first number. I don't know. That's one of the most common numbers between 1 and 10 that people like to guess. And, um, okay, so I might as well write a little java.comment comment while I'm getting started here. I'm going to place the guess my number game. The number should be between 1 and 10. All right, and so the parameter is going to be the number uh, to guess. All right, I'll hit Control Shift F so that all formats, it's save, and everything compiles just fine. So I think what I might say, let me grab this hello and uh, put it up here now, and then we'll say guess my number. All right, and, and so what I want to do is uh, normally if I were to you know, do a scanner input like we've done before. Let's see, I create a scanner, um, and it hasn't been imported yet, so let me go ahead and do that. Scanner in equals new scanner for system.in. And um, I would do something like uh, display a prompt, so system.out.print, enter a number between, uh, well, let's just say enter a number, that's close enough. And then the next thing I would do is n.nextInt, right, if this is going to be reading an integer, and I'll, I'll have to assign this to some kind of number. So, of course, number, the variable, is what I want to guess. So let's just say int, uh, you know, input is n.nextInt. And then, you know, I could say with an if statement, like we've seen before, if input is number, then I'll say, um, you got it. And if it's not, then I could say, you didn't get it. Let's just say, nope. Okay, so if I run this program as is, I don't have any loops yet, but we're about to add a loop to it. Let me just run this to make sure that it works. You know, I'll always save before launching. Okay, guess my number. Enter a number, uh, five. Nope. And of course, if I run this program again, Guess my number, and I put seven, which is the number that I wanted to play, and so you got it. So I have a basic uh, program so far. Let me get rid of this extra output we don't really need. And um, this, uh, now let's say I want to keep guessing until I get it right. So in other words, I, I need a loop. And in Java, there's basically two kinds of loops. There's a while loop, which will run indefinitely. So sometimes we call this an indefinite loop because it's going to keep looping until some condition um, is no longer true. There's also a for loop that will run for a specific number of times. And so sometimes we call that a definite loop. We definitely know how long we want it to run. But in this case, I don't know how many times the user is going to guess until they get it right. So I, I need an indefinite loop. So let's just say instead of um, if input equals number, I could say while input is not equal to number. And is um, so when, when it's not equal to the number, I want to say, um, nope, maybe I could say uh, try again. And then at the very end of my method, I could be like, you got it, right? So when I'm done looping, um, and when the number actually equals the input, then that's when this little game will end. Now, the problem is, is I need to keep asking for the input. So this part right here about intro and number should be inside the while loop. Um, and now I've, I've got my code all out of order because input, the variable, um, has not even been declared or initialized. I can't declare and initialize it here three lines after I'm using it. So uh, with the while loop, you have to do a little finagling. I could say, for example, int input, and let's just make it negative one because I know if the number is between one and ten, then negative one is never going to um, be one of the correct answers. So that at least makes it so I can start using this in the while loop. And then instead of declaring it again in the loop, I can go ahead and um, say next int. So 
And now maybe um, if I'm going to print out the message, nope, try again, well, I only want to do that if it's not correct. So why don't I say if input is not equal to number, nope, try again. Okay, so what this program does is it creates a scanner, it initializes input to some dummy value, and as long as my input is not the number I'm trying to guess, I'm going to say enter a number, read it in from the keyboard, and if it's not the number, then I'm going to say nope, try again. Otherwise, it will get me out of this loop and I'll be like, you got it. So let me run this program to make sure it works. Enter a number, one, nope, try again. Two, nope, try again. Okay, seven, you got it, right? So again, this while loop is going to keep repeating this code here in the middle until it satisfies the condition. Now there's a couple things that are awkward about this while loop. You'll notice I have the condition if uh, input is not equal to number twice. It'd be nice if I only had to write that code once. It's, it's also awkward that I have this variable in input equals negative one. Um, in general, you should never have to initialize a variable until you actually have a value that's meaningful for it. And so what I want to do instead is use a different version of while that allows me to get rid of these kinds of issues. In fact, that's called the do while loop. What's nice about do while is that you know you need to do something at least one time, and the while will keep doing it until you're satisfied. So whereas a while loop may never run if the condition is false to begin with. So if I were to change this into a do while, I'd have to put the while at the very end. So I'll just say do, and then the while comes here at the end of that closing brace. So I want to do this while input is not equal to number. And what's nice about this is I don't even have to initialize the variable anymore because it's going to get initialized when there's actually a value for it. So do while is nice, especially for input validation when you know you're going to have to run the code at least one time and then you don't have to do like extra work like initializing to dummy values. Um, the other thing that would be nice is um, how do I get rid of this condition twice? Well, let's see here. I could just say enter a number and if that's not equal number, nope, try again. Um, I can't really see an obvious way of doing that unless I go ahead and get rid of the condition altogether. I could, if you want to loop forever, say true, right? So a while loop is going to run as long as it's true, and this is actually called an infinite loop. While true means keep running forever. And now I need a way to get out of this loop. So um, what I could say, if it's not equal to the number, do that. Otherwise, I could break, and break is a way to jump out of a loop. So this will terminate the infinite loop as soon as the number um, it matches, right? So... Uh, and maybe it'd be a little bit cleaner if I formatted this around and say, you know, if it is the number, um, instead of having a break statement, I could just be like, you got it, and then I could return from the method. And instead of saying, nope, try again, well, I'll just do that before looping back around, right? So there's lots of different ways to compose a solution, whether you use while or do while, whether you have a condition or whether you have a break or a return. These are all tools in your toolbox for designing an algorithm uh, to repeat instructions and make decisions. So in the end, the one that I'm demonstrating here is going to do everything forever, and eventually when I do guess the number, I'm just going to return from the method and that basically terminates the program anyway. Of course, before I do that, I say I got it. If I do loop back around, then I'm going to say nope, try again. Let me just test to make sure that this code is working here. So enter a number, let's say um, three, Nope, try again. Okay, six. Nope, try again. Seven, you got it. Now, um, I could also add other functionality to this loop. Let's say they enter a number, or let's say they don't even enter a number, right? I could be like, if n dot has next int. So it's possible that I might type the, well, here, let me show you a demonstration before I give you that scanner code. I'm going to hit play. And they say enter a number, and I'd be like, ha, 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 ha. And it's like, oh, I broke the program, right? Because I got this impact, input mismatch exception. It, it wasn't expecting ha ha ha, it was expecting an int. And so in this situation, it'd be nice if I said something like if n dot has next int, and, um, or rather if it does not, so if not n has next int, what I could do is say, you know, system dot, I could, I could use system dot error if I want to make it really an error message. I'm just gonna use system dot out um, and not deal with the error stream. So system.out.print, let's just say um, I need a number. <laughs> or let's just say 
oops, or it doesn't matter what you say, you can come up with your own error message, right? But the idea is that I'm going to go ahead and read that next token, uh, which is like the word ha or ha ha. I mean, it's going to read each token separated by spaces. So technically, if I were to type ha 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 on the line, it's going to call this ha 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 three times. But let's just do in dot next to uh, discard uh, the invalid token. And then I can go ahead and hit continue. Continue is the opposite of break. Continue says go back to the start of the loop so you can see how do is highlighted by Eclipse right now and continue running that loop from the start again. So it's going to ignore all this other stuff and then just try it over again. Um, and so this code will allow me to get rid of invalid input. Let me see if this works now. So if I hit play, enter a number, ha, oops, enter a number, and I guess I should use print line there so it doesn't put it all on the same um, line of output. And, okay, in fact, Let's uh, go ahead and save and restart the program now. So if I were to say, ha ha, notice how it's like, oops, enter a number, oops, because each of these ha's were read in different iterations of that loop by in.next. See, in.next is only going to discard um, one word of the input. If I want to get rid of the entire line, I could say next line, and that's going to read all the input to the end of line character. And so now if I um, hit play again and I say, Ha ha ha, you can't catch me. It's just going to say oops and then say enter a number again. And I guess I could leave you um, with one exercise without showing this solution. What if I enter a number like 15 that's not between 0 and 10? It would be nice if this guess method had an additional if statement that was like if the number is less than 1 or if the number is greater than 10, print out an applicable error message and then continue running the loop again until they enter the correct type of number. But you see basically how this works is I'm just repeating these decisions until I get the input I want, and then eventually the game is over and I say you got it. That's um, how while loops work. They run indefinitely until the condition you're looking for is true. So let me now show you a different example um, using for loops. So let me just say, you know, demo of indefinite loop, which is called a while. Um, let's say I want to make a program that's, well, we'll, we'll pick an example from math. You know, if, if I give you a number like, say, 20, and I want to list all of the numbers that divide evenly into 20, we call them the factors of 20. Well, how would I make a program that prints out every factor of an integer? Um, let's go ahead and call this factor. And in fact, I'll just go ahead and put the number 20 there as we get started. And this is going to be a demo of definite loop, which we call 4. And of course, factor doesn't exist yet, so hmm, let's create a method called factor. Hey look, it even did it for me by clicking that little link, that was nice. Um, I'd like to have my methods above main, so let me go ahead and just cut and paste that and put it up here. And we'll say that this is a, um, prints the factors um, for the integer, for the given integer, let's just say. And let's just say um, the number you want. And of course, can't misspell. And let's get rid of these to do. Every time Eclipse generates a method, it puts this to do comment. Um, it's good to delete them when you actually complete the, the to do. It, in fact, if you ever put to do in all capital letters, it puts these nice blue check boxes in the margins. So you can add to do comments throughout your program and as a way to like scroll through and make sure you've done everything you, you meant to do. But I've been taking off points if you submit code with the to do, so just go ahead and delete it um, and don't submit any sort of incomplete uh, code that way. Okay, so. Let's um, say that in the factor, so um, let's say I have the number 20, how would you tell which numbers divide into 20? Well, I have to look at all the numbers from 1 to 20. And a for loop is a nifty way to do that. I could say um, for x, let's say, well, let me go ahead and declare the int x, and you can declare it inside the loop like this, or you can declare the variable outside the loop. In fact, let me put it here just so you can see you don't have to put it inside the for statement. So I'm going to start x at 1, and I'm going to count up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, etc. until I make it up to this uh, number i. You know what, that variable i isn't very useful. Uh, let's give that a, a better name. And in fact, if, if you hit the, um, there's a shortcut key in Eclipse to rename a variable. It's, it's underneath refactor. So I guess you hit like control shift r or something like that. I'm on a Mac, so I'm not sure exactly what the key command is. But now what's nice is when I rename it, it renames it everywhere. So if I type like the word number, notice how it renames it here as well as in the java.com. This is kind of handy. Okay, so number, I guess, is a little bit 
more meaningful than just i. And now I can say for x equals 1, x is going to be less than or equal to number, so I want to keep iterating until I get up to that number. And then we'll say x plus plus, because every time in this loop I want to add 1 to x. And just to demonstrate how this works so far, I'll say sifton.out.println. Well, let's just print the value x in this loop. And so I don't want to have to play the guess my number game, so I'm going to comment out that part of my main method right now. So I'm only running this factor method with the argument 20. And uh, if I hit play, now what's wrong now? First sentence should end with a period. Oh, yes. Semicolon's not a period. So let me go ahead and fix that. And now it doesn't like how I don't have a space after my slash slash. You can fix that too. Okay, check style's happy. It's always good to take care of check style errors as soon as they happen. Don't put them off till later um, because they just kind of pile up and then you forget what you were doing when they happen. Okay, so let me go ahead and hit play. And notice how in my output, it just printed the values one through 20. And it might be confusing how that happened. And if you really want to understand how these things works, I strongly recommend using the Eclipse debugger. So for example, I can go ahead and set a breakpoint right here on line 41. Or let's see, I guess you have to double click. Let me double click line 42. I don't think you can break on a declaration because that doesn't actually run um, as code. That's just part of the compiling. And now instead of hitting run, I'm going to hit the debug button. And that's going to launch uh, my Debugger, well, let me accept the connection and let me say, yeah, you can remember my decision and always switch to debugger mode. So it's going to rearrange my windows and allow me to step through uh, the program one line at a time. And when I hit step over, I, which I guess is just the F6 key, you can see how this is running one line at a time. And notice on the right, it shows me the value X. So each time this loop is running, it's going to increment X to 3 and then print it out and then 4 and then print it out. And x is going to keep incrementing all the way until it becomes 20. So let me actually show you that part. we have got to 13, 14, 15, 16. It's nice that Eclipse over here on the right automatically um, highlights any values that have changed in the debugger. So now it's 20, and I print x. I'm going to increase it to 21, but that terminated it because 21 is not less than or equal to a number, and so then, then the method ends and the program uh, returns. You'll notice I've got some old programs running here. Let me go ahead and hit stop. I must have run these partially and never really completed them before launching another one. But in the debugger menu, you can terminate all your old um, partially run programs and then go ahead and hit this X to clear them out of the history. That kind of cleans up some resources on your computer. So I'm going to switch back to the Java perspective since I'm done debugging. Let me go ahead and turn off this breakpoint because I don't need it anymore. You just double click on the line numbers to turn a breakpoint on or off. And so now what I want to do is I have these numbers from 1 to 20. Maybe if I want to see if it divides, I can just use mod. So if number mod x is 0. So in other words, if I divide um, the number by x and there's no remainder, then that's one of its factors. It divided evenly. So for example, 4 is going to divide evenly into 20. Uh, 2 is going to divide into 20 as well, but 3 does not divide into 20. There's a remainder when that happens. So maybe what I want to do is say system.out.print. And let's just say, um, well, let's use a printf just for fun. I could say d is a factor of d. And let's put a new line at the end of that. And I'm going to say x is a factor of number. So that allows me to specify the whole line of output, go ahead and put x and number in there. And now if I run this program, you'll notice how it says 1 is a factor of 20, 2 is a factor of 20, 4, 5, 10, and 20. Well, every number, you know, 1 is a factor of it, every integer rather, right? And so it's not very useful to say that 1 is a factor of it. It's probably not useful to say that the number itself, I mean, even prime numbers are a factor of themselves. So let's actually change the conditions to start counting at 2. And let's stop before we hit the number, because um, that will sort of trim off the first and the last result there. So what's nice about a for loop is you have the initialize, the test, and the update all in one line of code. And so if you want to control the behavior of the loop, like where it stops and where it ends, all that information is on the same line. It, it just allows you to debug or to customize uh, without going all over the code looking for those different parts of the loop, say if it were a while statement instead. So when I run this program, you'll notice it just lists 2, 4, 5, and 10. I can change the number 20 to something, I don't know, more interesting. Let's try 100, right? And so now it's going to say, 
Oh, quite a few more. So 2, 4, 5, 10, 20, 25, and 50. Those are all of the integers that divide into 100 evenly. And of course, I could pick a prime number like, say, 17. And when I run this program, nothing prints out because it's prime. Uh, maybe as an additional exercise for you, can you imagine writing a method that tests whether a number is prime? Basically, what you have to do is keep track of if you ever find um, a factor. So you could have, for example, a Boolean variable um, is prime, and it could be uh, initially true. And then as soon as you find a factor, you set that variable to false because it's not a prime number if something divides into it by definition. And then at the end of that method, you can then return uh, that variable, you know, whether it was true or whether it became false. So that's a simple primality test. There's lots of different algorithms for testing if numbers are prime. You could probably look some of them up on Wikipedia, uh, but that'd be a nice uh, little exercise to try out with loops. So I hope this video was helpful. Um, again, we've got a while or a do while loop that shows you how you can keep running code until some condition changes. And you may not necessarily know how many times that's going to repeat, but when it, when it does, then you can even um, break it or you can continue it or you can make it repeat forever by just putting true there. Um, whereas at the for loop, you're going to run a specific number of times. I'm going to go from two to number. And, and that range is known before the loop even begins. Um, I may not know necessarily what the value number is, but it was given me from like the main method. So the computer knows what it is. Um, incidentally, if you want to see an infinite loop with a for loop, like a while true, you can just type four with two semicolons. Of course, that breaks this code because X is no longer initialized. But this is kind of a weird looking idiom in Java where it's the same as saying while true. It's just a for statement that doesn't do anything inside. So it's going to keep doing it basically forever. But it's considered pretty bad style to have these empty semicolons. So if you are going to do an infinite loop, you should just do while true. Well, I've probably told you more than you needed to know. And hopefully these uh, example programs and the hints I've given you today will be helpful on your next homework. Uh, let me know if you have any questions and good luck.